one. This is Tommy Gunn, and welcome back to the Marcus Deegan Show. The Marcus Deegan Show! <laughs> Thought I'd start it off with one of these! A front double bicep, what's the story, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. It's me, Marcus Deegan, your host, shooting from Sin City, Las Vegas, the sin capital of the world, right next door to the UFC Apex. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the pod. I thought I'd get my man back in the studio. You know, last time I talked to Tommy, we had such a great conversation that we decided that we wanted to do part two because we didn't really get to everything that we wanted to, to, to talk on. Um, we caught up at the AVN last week or the week before. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a few things that are going on. Would you welcome back to the show, my main man, my brother, Tommy Gunn. What's up? Good to see you. It's good to be seen. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Where have you been the last week? You've been kind of, I see you in the snow, and then I see you back here. Where? Uh, what's going on? I remained in, uh, actually, after AVN, I darted off to Los Angeles for some work there, and then handled that business, and now I'm back, excited because I knew I was going to see you, and we we're going to do this follow-up. You, um shoot in vegas as well as la that's correct um i suppose the industry has been hit with yet another little bit of a negative mm. f story that's come out yeah. two weeks ago jesse jane was found um un unalived with her fiance over a drug overdose yeah, um last week uh, I, I can't remember the young lady's name. I believe Emily Willis. Yeah, that's correct. She also had another drug overdose. This fucking fentanyl, man. I tell you what, it's killing people left, right, and center. Why do you think some of the girls are drawn to this drug in the industry, Tommy? Why? Well, I'm not entirely sure what their drug of choice is, and typically it's an escape of some sort of reality. You know, I've, like I said, I've express, expressed to you, I'd my own dark period of time with drugs and you know, trying to, I guess, distract myself and escape from some of the pain and things that life, you know, throws brings. at you. Yeah, sure. So I don't know what their, what their drug of choice is in this case, but you know, fentanyl obviously is a very big factor. Uh, back in my, you know, uh, period of time, that darkness was there was no fentanyl. Maybe yeah. I'm not sure being introduced to. Uh, in whatever capacity. it was more high, it was more like uppers like like coke and e and speed back in those well, days yeah yeah but now they're cutting it with fentanyl yeah so that's correct. right again don't take my word on any of this i'm not a, no but i've heard that as well you know so and now it's what's the problem is you know you set out to partake and this is what you, happens you discover it's horrible un unfortunately if you're i mean in this case emily's um battling we're trying to i guess uh recover from that od and Hopefully mm. she she prevails and is fine. Have you worked with her before? I have. Yeah, um, yeah. It's and just dreadful to see. Yeah. See that. And Jesse Jane, you work with her as well. Oh, multiple times we we did Pirates One and Two together. That's and, right. Uh, she was Digital Playgrounds contract girl. Yeah. She's such a sweetheart and yep. such a shining bright light. And anytime mm. you were in a room, you could yep. tell as soon as she came in there, just mm -hmm. you know, loads of yeah. uh, energy and, and yeah. positive positivity. But uh, again, uh, it's hard because. Nobody knows what anyone's struggling with outside mm. of how you know them on a personal basis. And yeah. That's, and that's, that's in the world. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not entirely just our industry. Right, right. Multiple industries and multiple walks of life. And it's, it's really a shame. Yeah. You know, what, we, we were speaking about the AVN, which uh, I was at a couple of weeks ago. We yeah. were covering it. And thanks to you, I got to interview some of the top stars in the mm -hmm. game. Um, what I did notice about that is the difference in some of the girls. Some of them are really upbeat and really forward and funny. And then others are a little bit withdrawn and shy even to an extent. Um, uh what I did find is, is that I went in there based on making it kind of comedy and lighthearted and, sure. and stuff. However, a lot of the interviews I've got, it turned to where the girls talked about, oh, I'm sober now. I'm, I'm in sobriety. Sure. I'm in my third they year. Mentioned that, right. And it really uh, uh, kind of took a different kind of turn. So um, how was your experience at the AVN? And do you find that as well? Like some girls are like really out there and, and ready to, and then some are withdrawn? Absolutely. My experience with AVN is it's, you know, uh, again, my 20 year uh, stretch of career in the business was my initial years in the business, you know, 
nobody really knew who I was. And mm. then one, two, three years go by. Oh, hey, Tommy Gunn. You know, four, five, six, seven years. Hey, Tommy Gunn. Now here, twenty years. You know, I, I couldn't go five feet. In, no, in, I, on the that floor, was one man. thing that shocked the fuck out of me. Like literally, when we were at the AVN Awards. Do you know what the AVN it's Awards are? Part, it's like a big convention with all the porn. And then the awards are on a Saturday later. Obviously, he was there with me, and I'm, I'm not joking you. This is no joke, guys. The male audience participants that were there were so happy to see him that all I heard was Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Gunn. Yo, Tommy, you le Tommy, legend. The goat, legend. The, the, goat. the goat. The I didn't goat. even know what the goat meant. Well, the, the greatest digital. of all time, well, right? I didn't know that. Yeah. I was like. So all well, these guys are coming like up and goat. fucking high-fiving you. And, and the they crazy. were just so happy. And that kind of blew me away a little bit because um, I, I realized how important these guys, it's not just about the girls. If, if, you're, if you're someone that these guys look up to, um, then you become a, a like like you said like their favorite baseball player or their yeah, favorite yeah, sports sure. player. I was just blown away by the reaction that you got from the straight men. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Like I said, that was the to uh, you know follow up with your question was Avian was just surreal. Like I said, I couldn't go five feet without oh my god this and that and this and that and then you know uh, the top three things that I heard that were kind of just you know mind blowing in themselves was. You taught me everything I know. And I go, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I've been watching you since I was in middle school. And I go, well, that can, you know, that confirms it's been a while. And then uh, another one was, uh, you know, some of the women would say, you know, you put me to sleep at night sometimes. <laughs> and I thought, I was like, oh, I get it. You know, they rub one out and then, yeah, uh, yeah. To dreamland. And I thought, wow, that's pretty, pretty, uh, yeah, it's Pretty, because I was a shy kid in high school. I swear on my just, you know, as God is my witness, I could, you know, I saw some girl I liked in high school or something, you know, I was just like, I like her, but ugh, might as well just, and still even to this day, it's somebody, I'll, I'll see somebody on set or I'll, I'll focus in on somebody or not. And I just kind of, mm. that'll never happen. Yeah, yeah. So you had like, a, you yeah. can't have this defeatist mentality, right? You had a hot date that night, a young lady that I got to interview. Uh, how did that oh, end up no, going? It, uh, well, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah, because I I hadn't planned on any dates anyway. Because I I just yeah. you know I have a special somebody that I talk to. She's uh, like I said, but she's not in the industry, right? No, right. she's in. Uh, She's some miles away. <laughs> and I've spoken to her f literally every day for the last almost two years. And it's wonderful. Yeah. But, you know, um, you know, to answer your question, I didn't have, like, my date really isn't, my version of a date would just be like, hey, you want to rock the red carpet together? Sure, okay, we'll right. do it. And then they end up disappearing anyway. So it never happened anyway because. You weren't that into it? No, it's, it wasn't that. It's this, you know, a, a lot of these girls, they don't. I guess they're propositioned by multiple things. And the next yeah, thing yeah, yeah. It was very tough. We were trying to coordinate, like, hey, I'll meet you here, and we can walk the red carpet, and then she'll disappear anyway and go yeah. her way, or maybe we'll hang out, who knows. And it's just simply to just have some momentary fellowship. Like, wow, look at the show, okay, and then psh, everyone goes their own way anyway. So. so is there any big, like, kind of parties afterwards where everyone kind of takes their clothes off? and? No, and, and, unless I don't know about them. I mean, but, <laughs> You know, I, you get some of these companies, the bigger companies, we're going to throw a big party and we're going to throw one here and over there. Mm. And, you know, you try to, well, I, I, I feel like I went to one of the parties and stood in line for a while and sat there and was realizing, why am I standing in line only yeah. to be, to get almost up to the front and I'm go, Hey, sorry, you, you know, yeah, you're not on the list. And I go, yeah. So, you know what? Well, for I'm just. For, for, for the guys that are listening, and, uh, and I want to touch on this because it was something that you said to me the other day, and I was, I was just kind of curious why. You said that you had a little bit of a downer after the AVN experience. You said that you kind of... It's a bit of a dip. Explain that. Well, like I said, I couldn't walk five feet. I was the coolest one of the, you know, it felt, made me felt that way. Oh, it was that way. Trust me, it was. Me yeah. and Chase couldn't stop talking about it. We couldn't believe it, how many yeah. people were just and fucking... And again, it's... it's, it's it's the audience and the fan base condensed into one place. Right. So therefore, you'll get that response. Sure, I get it. But <clears throat> afterwards, you know, you're kind of back to normal life. You know, you're just like, you know. Yeah. It's anything. It's kind of like, 
there's a bit of a low. Yeah. And I feel like that's maybe natural. It's like when you come home from vacation and you're yeah, like, now you're home. You're like, oh, yeah, it's so we're boring now. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what about like last time that we talked, we covered a fair few things. Sure. And it was one of the most successful podcasts that I've done in a minute. Wow. Like you were up there in the top three. Wonderful. Um, and I was really blown away by it. A lot of people were touched by your story. A lot. My Instagram blew up over a lot of okay. girls from the industry, sure. a lot of normal people, a lot of girls saying, oh, my God, I love him. He's so sweet. Um, that that kind of really made me feel good. Like I was I was happy that – we got such a positive yeah, reaction sure. out of that podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why I'm glad that we're doing this one. So I wanted to maybe cover on a few things that we didn't talk about. Okay. What do you got? What do you got? What do you so got? I, I, you have this, would you call it an all terrain fucking zombie apocalypse off-road house slash truck slash fucking beast? Well, you know, uh, I love the outdoors and going back, I, you know, when I first moved to California, I thought, wow, look at this geography. You got the ocean, you got the desert, you got the mountains, you got whatever. And it doesn't take much to get out of the city into the desert and you open this and you, you know. I'm not much of a tent camper, tent sleeper. You know? Well, yeah. I've done my share of that and, you know, you do it enough times, you're like, oh, don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. I'd rather sleep in a vehicle. So yeah. when I did uh, do a vehicle the first time, I, I made this, I bought this van, cheap van. I bought it from some woman off Craigslist for 800 bucks. It turned out she lived in it and it kind of smelled like that. So when I first got it and I, I, I gutted it out and redid the interior and then turned it into this, uh, through time, you know, I had one of my friends come over and go, what the hell is that? I go, well, it's my new project. I'm going to make this camper van into like a, you know, something cool. Yeah. I had, I had painted it all flat black because I didn't know what color. I said, like, ah, let me, it was ugly white and had all terrible, you know. Designs on it. And I said, ah, let me start with a flat black. And he goes, it looks like uh, some survival zombie thing. And I thought, that's it. Uh, that's now, direction. this is the big one that you've got right no, now. No, I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. So then I said, you know what? And so I started to fashion it after this zombie proof looking thing. And then eventually I made it and had it for quite a while and enjoyed it and went camping and this and that. And put quite the amount of work into it. And then I sold it on the television show Pawn Stars. And you could find that episode. It's called Zombie Apocalypse Pawn, Pawn Stars, you know. I've seen it. Yeah. And that's so. And they bought that, it? They bought it. Yeah. So at, after that, I thought, you know, I really want to make something that was legitimately a survival type, which had the, the, the gusto and it had the ability to be that. So if it happened. If it happened, you know, because that old thing, as soon as you went off road, you'd get stuck in two inches of sand, you'd be done. So this, in this case, when I sold that and I got the money, I thought, mm, look around. And uh, I, I saw this thing at a, there's an event called Wasteland Weekend. I saw this, I saw a truck similar to what I have now, and I thought, that's what I want. I want that exact thing. So through time and my investigations and looking around and poking around, I found one and kind of, emulated what I saw into this one. Yeah. And this one has already got the gusto. It's a five ton 1991 M923A2 BMY Harsco is the nomenclature. And it's a six wheel drive and it's a Okay, like explain to us explain to us non truck car guys what the fuck that it's is. Basically <laughs> a, a military cargo yeah. troop carrier that Weighed wow, about that's 22, what it is. Pounds. So what I did was I took it had a big it had a big flatbed pickup truck uh, bed. So I basically took the sides off and prepped the bed and built a structure on it that you could live in. It sleeps four. It's got water, shower, kitchen, solar. You know the whole thing. And I thought now this thing has the guts though, the the the, the oomph, if you will, to where if I need to come crashing through something or you know. I hate to run someone over, but run over some dead, walking dead. Yeah. I could do that. And yeah. now I own it, and now I have it, and I live in it. Full you know? time? No. I've lived in it for about four years, back some years ago. And then I brought it from California to Vegas, so it's here. And uh, when I fly in from where I'm currently residing, I just Uber from the airport to that. Yeah. I have a little tiny, you know, beat around car that I jump in and manage to you know, get my way around Vegas, and then I stay in the truck. 
Nice. Because it's got water and power and electric and uh, solar, and it's still quite the scary monster. You, do, what's the advantages of, of, of having that and the disadvantages? What, like? Well, the advantage of it are the 33,000 pounds it weighs. So if I did have to, you know, throw, throw its weight around you and kind of get out of a congested area of chaos and calamity, I could just barrel through whatever it was, get out to the desert where it's less people because civil unrest is, is probably going to be what's the dangerous part if anything does unfold. It's everybody's panicking and freaking out. And if you're in that type of scenario, yeah. Yeah. you never know who's going to, out of fear for their own survival and whatnot, people are going to resort to a more primitive, primitive way. Yep. Yeah. So I'd rather be in that big giant thing saying, oh, God, look, there's there's a roadblock. Yeah. Just no, there ain't. <laughs> Crash yeah. through it and get to where I got to go. And I, I outfitted it with two big gas tanks, 80, uh, pretty much 80 gallons each, 160. It gets about five miles to the gallon. So do the math. It'll do about 700 and change yeah. distance, range, before I have to pull over and spend $800 to fill it up. Is that what it's cost to fill it up? Well, yeah. Thanks to... Oil prices or gas prices. Now, why are the oil and gas prices up so high? I have no so idea, high? you know. Are we going to go down that <laughs> no, road? We're not we're gonna, no, we're not going to go just, down that road. We're not going to go down that road yeah, today? Yeah. Because they're just, who knows? Who, you know, at one point we were energy efficient, but we're not in that zone. Drill, baby, drill. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's why they call, that's why they call oil fossil fuel. It's, in, it's a play on words. It gives the fuel the scarcity when truth be told. It's abundant it's everywhere. It's abundant. Yeah. But yeah. you need to get the whoever's, you know, purchasers of it, you give them that scarcity complex and they're like, oh, it's worth it. So they can therefore do what they do with the prices anyway. That's a whole nother bug. That is, that, that's part three. Yeah, that's part three. <laughs> so now I have this truck full of supplies. We're going to insert, we're going to insert a little video or yeah, photo of the truck during, during that. Totally. Yeah. And I have it and who knows I mean, if it'll be ever. If you guys ever, like anyone that knows Tommy and follows him on his social media will know what I'm talking about. Anyone that doesn't, this thing looks like a huge, big, like zombie apocalypse, it's massive, big, big, giant black military, military truck. Well, this one's uh, it's desert like sand. Desert color. sand, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. is there any holes in there where you can put your shotguns through? No, I just get on the roof. I just get on the roof. you the shotgun or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So you be the gunner on the roof. I'll be the gunner. I got a brand new shotgun. There's a full 17 foot by 10 or by deck Not, up there right yeah full size yeah you can, so that's I where you put 10 people up there as long as they're fully ready to go they can shoot or way yeah. clear of everything have you know. shot any scenes inside that thing i have really strangely enough <laughs> yeah on the roof in the back for your own personal or that that have been uh, distributed both really enough yeah wow so do they do you get extra if they're shooting from your all-terrain vehicle like is that like do you get like a uh, an extra fee for the location. It's like a location rental. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. yeah. But anyway, it's fun and it's, yeah. it's been exciting. So I still have this thing and it's... Are you going to sell it or are you going to keep it? I don't know. The hard part's over. Making it, and building yeah. it and yeah. getting it. Now yeah. I own it and it doesn't cost me anything except maybe some... Gas. Insurance yeah. or registration a year. How do you know how to make all that kind of stuff? Like, you know, A lot of that was from, I guess, my dad was a very uh, handy guy gentleman and my my grandfather was a machinist so i think that runs in the family those types of uh ingenuity and figuring out how to do stuff and stuff like for me in school i wasn't very scholastic in the capacity where english or math or whatever but i knew machines and how things work you know once i took my mom's sewing machine apart and if you've ever taken a sewing machine apart you'll know there's probably that'd be a negative i've never done that no thought of that. moving parts and my dad came home one time and goes, what the hell is this? He's got parts all over the living room floor. And I put it back together and it worked. So maybe my brain has a better grasp on those mechanical uh, types of things. Yeah. Numbers. To me, numbers are Chinese. And it's like, I don't know what I'm looking at, you know. But I know how this fits. This wheel fits in there and these gears and these things. So I got a lot of that, I think, from my, my father and my uncle's genetics or whatever. And he's build stuff and just stuff. So you know That's welding and carpentry. I, know, and I, I learned it all myself. Yeah, yeah. Are you good at? You good at it oh, too? Oh yeah. I would. If you know, I always say, man, if I could only 
clone myself. Yeah. I, well, they well they can't. They, well, I think they right. can. I think they can I these days. Know. It's so, like I, I'd like to clone your cock. Actually, I think uh, I'd like that. <laughs> you know what's funny? There was an actual. Uh, there was a podcast within our industry. I think it was, you know, porn directors podcast or some stuff. And I was brought on, and this gentleman. What he would interview in a lot of the girls and stuff, and he would ask him, "If you ever was on a deserted island, who male talent would you have in the business?" And they were all like, 75, 80 percent was like Tommy Gunn, because he could build build something. Yeah, yeah he could build a shelter, some you know, spears, and, and you know, take care of me too. While yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah. But I guess that that's a good uh, level of a benchmark. Like, yeah, at least in my industry, I know that I'm. Sought after for apocalyptic survival type scenario. Well, I think I think you're sought after for a lot more reasons than that. I'm not just talking about you know the whole sex part. That's obviously great as well. But I think it's you know it stems back to what we talked about last time, which is a lot of what what I'm glad that we got to share that with everybody is the the lighter side of Tommy Gunn, the 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 heartbreak side, the sure. the, the 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 wanting of a partner for life. Tommy Gunn. Um, I'm so glad that we got to showcase that because yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know. I mean, I, I think in the industry they do, but outside of the industry, I don't know if a lot of people know that's that's kind of how you are. Well, I think perception, you know, is is the thing that, you know, people look and say, oh, yeah, here's this guy, 20-year career in the business, has had, you know, sex with multiple women over the course of all these years in so many different ways or shape or form or whatever. You can't be having any problems in that area, right? It's just, strangely enough, you would you might not realize that it kind of, you know, I, I feel like I painted myself into somewhat of a corner. And someone mm. would say, well, how do you mean by that? I said, well, I just don't know if I'm, if somebody would consider me, uh, you know. Marriage material? You know, somebody, you know, yeah, he's in the business. Uh, he's done all these things and. You know, at, at some point, does a girl say, yeah, I, you seem like a nice guy. And the next thing you know, you start being with them or stuff. And then eventually through time, you know, you might get that, you know, I might be in the bed chilling, reading something. And then from the bathroom, you know, let's say we're living together. So, you know, you hear somebody, you hear the girl from the bathroom say, so, you know, tell me about these girls that you work with over time. And I go, oh, or, um, or is, maybe that, she, is that always a or question? Maybe she chimes in eventually through time because she says, uh. So what do you see in me? You know, here comes the here comes the the comparison. I want you to compare. Or maybe me to the, the comparison, or maybe just the here comes the insecurities. Maybe maybe now she decides after time she wants to ask me. So what do you see in me versus all these girls? Or how could I compare to them? And and, and I don't I don't I don't have I don't really have the answer. I just sometimes I. I don't know what to say, right? Yeah. So you've had this, that. you've I'm had. I'm here with you and that's. You've that's, had this question before, obviously. Well, probably f from nearly all your girlfriends, right? You know, like I said, I had, I've been married outside of the business and then I've been married in the business. And just by virtue of human nature, I think we all kind of at some point or another question maybe why someone likes us or my, why, why me or why, mm -hmm. even men, I'm sure they do. So I don't know. I mean, is Am I somebody that someone looks at and goes, ah, oh. but I'm, you know, again, my, my friend that I talk to every day seems to think that and I, and I love that and I, re I respect that and I appreciate that, but. She doesn't ask you those kind of questions? Uh, not really. I mean, but again, uh, who knows what's, who knows where that goes? I don't know. I can only. So I suppose it, it comes to like maybe making that commitment now, if it's been two years. Yeah, yeah. Is there like, hey, look, let's. I'm trying to get up there for, uh, it's just, you know, my my schedule and things and whatnot, you know. But we, th we, sp we speak every day, we talk on video chat, so. What's your schedule? What's happening now? What do you got going on? Well, you know, uh, I like to be busy, so I like to work. I like to earn Yep. Have, a, have an income that's that's nice obviously nobody wants to be without that so <laughs> yeah you think you know <laughs> I mean, it's, it's what makes the world go around right. it's unfortunate but yeah yeah so uh i do have some uh i do have uh a partner that lives in in toronto uh, he was the gentleman that i talked about in the making of spartacus yeah right 
he and I, been know, we've known each other for quite a long time. He's a producer and uh, stunt coordinator, and uh, his name is Paul. He's a great guy, known him for so long. Rapovsky is his last name. He's a, he's a uh, stunt coordinator, producer, and really dear friend of mine. We met in the, I met him on the set, strangely enough, when I was working with Jesse Jane physically at that moment. Wow. And here comes the, here comes the owner of Digital Prague at the time, and he was with Paul, and we were just... And cutting, we were literally in, in this full sex position, like, oh, hey man, how are you? And then we got up and we kind of did our thing, and I, I gave him the, the elbow. The elbow, yeah. Instead of handing <laughs> I, him my d- hand. Yeah, I was, you just read my mind there. I'm like, was it a high five, a fist bump, or the elbow? I gave him you? the elbow, which is the porn <laughs> shake. And he said, hey, nice to meet you. And then later, that, later, after all that kind of, we finished with that scene. I got his number, and he said, I, you, you got this great look, and you would be good for this character in this movie that I'm trying to do up in Canada. Anyway, so we became friends 15 years. So I have that relationship with him, and I've been there a, a number of times visiting him. Met his family, his, his daughter and everything. And it was really great. He put me in a, that movie, Wolves. Yep, yep, That was yep, really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, he put yep. me in that. He had the, he had the uh, as a stunt coordinator, certain parts of uh, the script if it falls within a certain type of activity, in this case, it was two biker guys smacking around a, a truck stop. Yeah, girl. yeah, yeah. It fell into his realm of being a being able to cast that. So he yeah. cast me in that, and that was fun. And so I have, we have slated some projects in the near future that we're trying to develop, and uh, we're going to. And mm. so I'm, that's going to what brings me to to go to Canada. Again, so when I get there, I'll be able to. So you going there soon? I'm hoping, you know, yeah. hoping to multitask. You know, you and I spoke up. of a few possible business ventures, yeah. which I definitely would like to, um, you know, talk more about. You and I have been in the similar industry in the sure, past, sure, and yeah. there's definitely a market for that. I won't go into it too much, but um, I definitely want to continue talking to you about that because I think it's, that would, I think we'd fucking do really well with that. Again. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You nothing know, you ventured, gotta, nothing gained. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta pull the trigger. And again, if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean it was a failure. It's just right. You learn from that to to uh, adjust and co- coordinate your next move that hopefully yeah. does pay off or does whatever. I feel like I'm kind of starting again because you know, after being with the show for 26 years you become institutionalized like it's all you know and when you have that regular income every two weeks every two weeks for 26 years and then all of a sudden it's it's, not there it's not there now you've definitely got some money to survive on but you're not working so you then after about four years of that that money's gone sure and now you're scrambling and it's fearful it's like it's it's terrifying Beyond, because you know that you have it in you to be productive and to be, but it's just the timing is there, not there. Something's not lined up. You know, you got to get off one mountain at the top and stand at the bottom of the next one to climb it. To get what's your kind of similar to how I feel with the business twenty years. You know, I'm still doing it, but you know, it's kind of like diminishing returns. You know, at some point, it's less and less. And then hopefully that 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 revenue stream doesn't, and it will because just of the nature you have to you gotta you can't steal second without leaving first base. Or yeah. You gotta leave that to go there and direct yourself in that respect. One of the things that I do want to do is uh, I'm writing a book, so I, that's I'd like to such share. an amazing idea. And then while I was in the Avian. I want to try to develop a television show, some sort of where I was a host and I kind of uh, had uh, guests that may have not known, knew what to do or I could teach them a certain skill set or something revolved around survival or automotive or fixing stuff. Or, you know, it's still, you know, very loosely uh, conceptualized. But mm. I met a gentleman, Joel, uh, this gentleman, he was a or he is a documentary film maker and he made a film about a gentleman alfie best in the bbc called gypsy billionaire and it it chronicles this gentleman's rise from being a gypsy which in that world and that in the countryside is 
it's a caravan person, someone yep. who's, they don't have a home, they caravan around. So they're kind of, in some way, looked down upon mm. from society. Pikeys, they called in Ireland, yeah, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So he had a huge, uh, he did a, he did this documentary and it was a huge success. It's one number one in uh, Prime, Amazon Prime. So he's getting a lot of traction and Alfie Best as well is, is getting a lot of praise and whatnot and success story and so is this Joel, jo Joel Vandermolen, if I can pronounce that correctly, I think. Yeah. But he, I met this guy and he said, man, we got to talking and we talked and he saw like what you saw, the reaction of people and he said, man, I'd love to, I'd love for you to be the second, my second subject. Wow. Writer. This so, is the guy that did the one that was really successful with the, oh, wow. Tommy, so that's now, great. He, you know, and again, I try not to get my hopes up. Because they've been shattered so many, so times. many times. Mine too, buddy. Mine too. But, you know, you got to get up every morning and put one foot in front of the other and breathe in and out and give it another shot. So yeah. we'll see what becomes of it. Do you think it's scary for guys like us because we're getting on now, like yeah. we're getting up to our 60s? And it's unbelievable. The opportunity kind of falls away a little bit as we're getting a little older. That comes part and parcel. How do you stay grounded and how do you stay – focused on the on, on the fucking road ahead in, instead of falling into the depression and devastation of fuck well, 60s right knocking on there knocking on the door well i try to be observant of my surroundings and i look for people less fortunate and i say to myself wow you know i'm not that i'm in that i'm not in that shape you know i'm not a homeless person i don't see somebody Maybe somebody's, uh, you know, a veteran or they lost a limb or here they are on a sidewalk begging for money or something. And that's very unfortunate in people who are less fortunate. So I say, you know, I still got 10 fingers and 10 toes. I can get up and I have a rational uh, brain. brain and I have from what of a good head on my shoulders. I think I can, you know, differentiate before, between wrong and right and what not to do and not to do and be kind to people. So gratitude you know, I got a house. I have a yeah. Great that's, I'm glad you said that. Gratitude. I'm glad you said that. I'm so glad you said gratitude because that's what it is, man. So I'm trying to perpetuate this feeling. You know, I wake up in the morning and I, I know it sounds a bit strange, but I say, God, thanks for waking me up. Does not sound strange one bit. Thanks for waking me up because there's a lot of people who weren't that blessed and would have loved to have wait, wait, woken up one more day to spend one more moment with somebody who's there family or friend or whatever, or pet, whatever the capacity is. Yeah, yeah. So each day I go, oh, I was, I was given a present. Mm -hmm. Hence, that's why they call the present moment the present, because it's a gift. It's a present. So I got up, there's a start. I get <laughs> okay, to breathe. A minute. <laughs> I get to breathe, <laughs> breathe in and out. That was the tattoo that my dad had on his. Come on, yeah. Was uh, life is a gift? That's why they call it the present. Yeah, he had that Aww. actual tattoo. So. It's a good tattoo. It's a good. I don't know what it is, but like when I think of my dad, I try to think of it as happy and. But yeah. because he just passed away, I think it's still fresh with me. Like, yeah, sure, it'll it will be. Yeah, and I just wonder, like, does that does it get better? Yeah, it will. You'll always. Have that moment of that, yeah, you know? and, my and, and and it comes out of nowhere. Like yeah, literally, you sure. just saying that yeah. just made me remember that that tattoo, and it kind of um, made, yeah, it's yeah. making me feel this like just good. right now. So that oh, you just you said know, it's that. It's not embarrassing to cry. It's not embarrassing. It's a healing moment. Like yeah. my mom passed away in '94. It's 30 years now. So and it's still it's still like, you know, my it, dad's 82. I'm wondering, yeah, where I'm at with that. You know, I got to try to see him more often. This is what happened. It's good. It's a good thing. But, yeah. uh, yeah. So, there's, there's that. I have to say to myself, I'm, I'm blessed to be here this moment right now. Yeah. You know, well, you sharing know, it with you. and You, uh, I, don't, I won't go into too much detail, but you fucking saved my ass last week. Well, well, a couple of days ago, you, sa you me, saved me from a lot of shit. Okay. And uh, you you came up when a lot of people didn't. And I really, I mean, I've always respected you and I've always loved you, but 
you are a very stand up man and I've always fucking got your back. Well, likewise. Always, always. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not the size or it's not the amount or whatever. It's the thought and it's the thing and it's whatever. And, you know, if I could, I'd snap my fingers and you'd never have another problem in your life. And isn't that... And I, it, I would be like, I let's would love just to travel be the to, fucking world and yeah. don't have to worry about paying for anything. I'd, I'd, be, I'd love I'd to do that. I'd call a few people that I love and hold dear to my heart and I'd say, let's... Yeah. We're going to go and we're going to travel the world. Yeah. And we're going to see some great stuff and memories and hopefully... It, we, we'll see how long we can do this for. Yeah. Don't well, worry about anything. Do you think that maybe, I mean, because technology is so great these days and AI and whatnot, do you think that maybe within the next 20 years they'll have come up with something that will be able to live a lot longer than the regulated, what, what is it, 80 years for 80. a man? Is well, it 80? It, Which is only I, fucking 20. 75. That's 20 years for me left. If, if, if that's the case, 25 or 76. I'll be 57 in May, so 19, 18 years left or something. But it goes so quick, so that's Has one it of gone things, quicker of late? It yeah. Sp speeds up quicker as you get older, right? Uh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, it does. That's what we as a human race, I believe, is, you know, time is, is the only thing that we're limited to have. You only get so much of it, right? So, however you decide to spend it on what, doing what, and how you're, you know how you do that, yeah, is up to you, right? You know, but that's one of the things they wish they they could try to change is age, the uh, lengthening your age. How long, you know? They say whether it's true or not, the first the first person the person that will live to one hundred fifty is already alive. Right? Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, that's so interesting. Mm. So life extension, right? We want to live as long as possible for the most part. I mean, unless... If you're able and if you're still sure. in the mind Cognitive and you're not crapping... Yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah. Not, it sucks. But if you look at people like... Like I think about, you know, we talk about 75. Sylvester Stallone, 76. Gene Simmons, 73. Yeah, Paul yeah. Stanley from Kiss, he's 72. Um, you've got... Well, Keith Richards. He's Keith Richards. No, Joe, he might, he might be Joe Biden! <laughs> um, no, forget about him. But you know what I mean? You've got all these guys that are a little... That, that are like 20 years older than us that sure. are still fucking rocking on uh, and still doing it. What's yeah. what's the difference? I don't know. What they've done, I don't know. How they conditioned their bodies with whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's bizarre. Whatever their activities are. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. To say... So, have you spoke to Marcus lately, London? I speak with him pretty much daily. How's he him doing? Him and Tony. They're, the both of them have gotten, went and went back to the UK. Yeah. Uh, and, again, we're, we're all pretty much a year apart. And is is he going mates. through the same stuff as you as well? Yeah, he was, you know, he was 20 years in the business. We met on set doing wonderful things, acting together, and we we connected and just we became like the three amigos, the three of us. And uh, they moved away, they moved back and they're experiencing the same thing, much like yourself. You know, you went through a 20 year or 20 change year yeah. career of, you know, it being a certain way and you get, you get acclimated to that and you kind of rely on it. Like, you know, you're waking up tomorrow and doing that. So now they've changed and he's, he's in the UK and I still manage to be, I say it, I call it circling the drain metaphorically because i love that i'm still here yeah. but i've yet I, i've yet to go down the drain <laughs> but yet i'm still whoop, i, I yeah, see I the drain i don't see it i don't see you going down that drain i just cannot picture it well i just can't my phone keeps ringing it's not as much but i st i gotta phone people up and say hey you know are you still doing these things because i i'm the plumbing still works yeah and yeah yeah i still try to pride myself on being in a good physical shape to where I'm not scaring any girls away. Like, oh, I don't want to work with that guy because he's... Yeah. Because he looks like... Trevor, dreadful or not. So I did actually cop a little bit of shit from a few of the male talent in the industry from our podcast. I got a few oh, negative... Yeah? Uh, like what? when I said that uh, none of the guys in the industry are in shape, well, I got I copped a little bit there's of... There's a lot. I copped a bit of... of in uh, their defense, they there are cats that... Yeah, they really is. pride themselves in. But you got to remember, when you talked about it, you were talking about 20 years ago. Maybe that, that was the distinction that they didn't understand. So yeah. 20 years ago, again, there was a select few cats that felt like they wanted to 
be in good shape on their own part. And then they brought it to the set, and that's great. But prior to that, you know, before myself and whatnot, you know, yeah. it was an anomaly to be in really good shape. Most cats were just standard-looking gentlemen, yeah. but they could get themselves together in time for the, for the, for the performance. So yeah. that was what got them to be. You showed up with the right tools. There's, he's the guy. Yeah. And that is more important than looks or physique. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you still got to be able to do that. So in defense of the, of the guys who may have taken whatever to that, because there are a lot of cats now that respect the, that pride themselves on being in shape. And yeah, yeah, gotta, yeah. That's great, and we admire that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if I, if I was doing it, I'd just be— in, as, as chalk up for those guys— Keep at it. Keep, keep at it. And you yeah. know, remember, we, we got to respect our co-stars, the young ladies who yep. make our job so wonderful. At the end of the day, uh, we are the frame around the picture, or as a friend of mine, Seth, said, we're the phase that holds the, the roses. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, or we're the male cheerleaders that throw the girl up in the air and catch her so she don't come crashing down. So there is a role for the male performer in the business, although but, we're not the the center of attention. Together we make the whole thing as a accomplices in the crime. Yeah, if you want to go. So we were going to touch on this last time and we didn't. And I was in. I, I had a couple of people say, "Why didn't you ask him about that performer?" And I was like, "Oh, I'll mention it more this time." So one of the uh, old performers from back in the day, Ron Jeremy. Uh -huh. um, had a completely different reputation to what you had. Obviously, back in the day, he was one of the first kind of big names in the male talent. Sure. John Holmes, all those kind of dudes. Um, and then, it, and then it, it kind of went fucking pear-shaped for him real quick. Not only, you know, did he end up getting thrown in jail, but right. apparently now he has full-blown so, dementia and he just walks around again, the prison talking to himself and talking I to walls. I, I can't uh, personally confirm those things. Yeah. I, but have you heard that as well though? Yeah. I've yeah. Heard I've that. heard that. I've heard that. And, but outside of that, I don't know. Yeah. And again, uh, to me, gentlemen, always nice. Yeah. Hey, Tommy, how are you? Very soft spoken. Uh, when I witnessed him in his way, he behaved himself. You didn't like that? No. I, I never saw anything that was over the, over that was out outlandish or out you know yeah he shouldn't do that or he shouldn't do it. and i'm but but again i'm not a i'm not a girl so i don't right he never came up to me and did but what i did witness was back in my earlier days it was kind of like a porn type of handshake or behavioral thing you know it's happened to me plenty of times you know i could be at a convention right back in the heyday and a girl might come up to me and kind of grab me down here and look at me and say "Ooh." I heard all about this. I can't wait to get my turn. Does that piss you off when that happens? No, because it doesn't. It wouldn't bother you. Just some random person that you don't. Well, it was an with. actress in the business that we've yet to work with. Okay, that's a bit different. And plus, for me, I got a little more kind of uh, uh, thicker skin in that capacity. Right. You know, but if, if it was just a civilian me, that just come up at even the even then, you know, I. What if his name was Eric? <laughs> okay, maybe. <you're> probably <laughs> but no. Uh, Again, yeah. It's a so back then when some of the young ladies saw him as the you know, there's Ron Jeremy. There's this iconic figure. It'll behoove me to get a photograph with him. And he's his his typical handshake might be, "Ooh, let me feel your breast," or you know, maybe pat her on the, butt, the butt. I don't know, or or or, or sign her sign her boobs. Yeah, with I a, saw with that. A magic yeah. marker. And again, that's his whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I can't, I can't personally, like from what I said, I've, I've, I've spent time with them, you know, at events. Oh, hey, Ron, how's it going? How's, how's your crowd? It's great. Yes. You know, nothing. So for all of that to have gone and, and, you know, materialized, uh, yeah, right. I can't tell you one or the other. I think what happened was he just behaved this, a certain way and the time, the times changed around him. That's it right there. So now what his, me too typical, and all that. his typical behavioral way wasn't kosher anymore. Like 
back in the old olden days when you know how many girls would be like oh i gotta fuck around jeremy because yeah. it'll be good and well, maybe they threw themselves at the guy i don't know look I, at I priscilla know. presley she was 13 when she was dating elvis elvis is 23 i mean i mean if that if you did that i mean that would never happen now yeah yeah and you know again it's an interesting thing conversation because our industry is that's what we do, you know. Yeah. It's a sexually driven industry. So. Right, right. So to have a bit of like a, I don't know, ba porn, banter? porn handshake or yeah, porn yeah. type of, uh, I get it, I get like it, way about each yeah, other. Yeah, you know, how many times have a girl said, "Oh my God, Tommy Gunn," and this and we, and I hug her, and she, you know, and yeah, maybe. No, I, t I totally get it. I totally get it. Like I, I, I would do some things at the show, and the management would say. You can't say that or do that. I'm like, sure. they're at a fucking strip show. Yeah, Relax. It's, right. it's it's a sexually orientated night, like you well, say. Here, well, here's a here's a perfect example, and I've we've seen it. I danced for 10, 12 years. What was the name of the group? You remember? Satin Affair, Male Re uh, American Male, uh, uh, Hollywood's Hottest Men, the the the, the Club Abyss. Uh, escapes, you know. So you've, done all, a few, you've done a few. Yeah, you would freelance though, right? You weren't just yeah, big one. Jump, I would jump on a tour and we'd go halfway around the country. Yeah, and, and do like band. a six-week tour, and then yeah, pulling, yeah, yeah. Pulling, how, pulling good, how much fun is that? It was great. It was great. But here's the difference. Remember this, men. You and I, you and I go to a strip club, and we know that we can't just go in there and grab ass. Yeah, because we'll get punched in the face and thrown out in the alley, if we're lucky. If we're lucky, yeah. Right? Yeah. You can't do that. No. But at a strip show for men, dancing for women, they're all over the place, yes. grabbing and shitting. I've been, I've been literally, uh, my G string or T back, whatever you want to call them, you know, we had thong. This thong. I have been literally ripped off. I've had a girl take it and rip it, <laughs> hang it, yeah. and now oh, it's yeah. hanging down like shreds of yeah. fabric, yeah. and I'm on the stage. In my birthday suit, and yeah. I cover myself and run off. Yeah. Or you're walking through the crowd, and they're poking you, or they're trying to do that, and that's that's happened too, where you jump up in the air a few feet, and you're like, "Hey, yeah. you can't do that," or they bite you on the ass cheek, literally, but they get away with it. Yeah. So it's kind of a, it's not, it's a double standard. Is that right? Is that the correct word? Hundred percent. I you think know, they so behave. Wor they behave worse. The women behave way more sexualized than what then, the men do. Yeah, but it's okay because yeah. they're women. They're just women. It's okay. Yeah, and that's whatever. Yeah, but how 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 is it that that's happening? I mean, I don't. I, I I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. There was one segment in the show I remember where the guy would stand and the lady's head was there and. He, he would bring his head close to her and then he would grab a drink and he would pour it. Yeah. And and the the drink would be dripping off his thong and she'd be drinking it. Yeah, yeah. And I said to him, when was the last time you washed that fucking you know thing? He's like, oh, I've, seen, I've seen women, believe me, in the privacy of their own home doing like a strip, like a bachelorette party or a birthday party. I Where show you knock up. on the door I the knock cop? on the door. I'm the cop. I give the girl my my cassette tape. She 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 sneaks into the house, puts it in the stereo system, hits play. Dun, 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 dun. I come in and there's 30 girls, grandmoms and aunts and uh, sister-in-laws and whatnot, the and they gay, all got the penis. Cousin. They all got penis paraphernalia, like antennas yeah, with yeah, penises sticking yeah, off, and their yeah. drinks got penis straws and everything's yeah, penis. Yeah. And you walk in there, and if you're not careful, it can it, you can you, you, can, you can come out of there scarred, scarred, and and again, but again, society would say, oh, how terrible would that be if you got you know, right, yeah. Oh, no, As a guy being, uh, you know, taking advantage dangerous. of in a, in a room of 30 girls. Yeah. But yet, flip it. Uh, can you imagine if you flipped horrifying. it? I don't think it even happens <laughs> like that, does it? You know? I, again, I knew plenty of girls that would have a security guard, a bodyguard. Oh, they'd have to, When yeah. they danced, they'd go into a room full of gentlemen and mm. do a thing. And yeah. the two girls would do a little show and a little act. And there'd be this 200-pound secu security guard. And I get it. I understand. But it's... Two different worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's happened to me plenty of times. I go in, I do the cop thing, I'm ready to leave, and I can't find my clothes. And yeah. the girls are all like, "Yeah, uh, <laughs> with their hands behind her back." And so I'm like, on, I, "I got can't another leave gig. without clothes." And 
you know, you got to kind of please. And the next thing you know, you get all your stuff and you leave and you're like, Whew. yeah. but again, who's going to say, oh, poor you. Yeah. Yeah. No, they don't get it. Uh, I mean, they but, really don't. So, you know, you, women want men to behave themselves, yet they, they don't have, mm. or maybe, I don't know, it's less of a, less of a, uh, an issue for them. But again, to answer your question, Ron, I don't know. It's a, it's unfortunate for everybody. Yeah. The women he may have done whatever he'd done to, and here he is now, seventy, and he's in this situation. I don't know. I can't. Comes back down to like feeling gratitude again, right? It's like fuck. Yeah, I mean, nobody, you know, nobody, nobody wants to go to jail, and uh, you know, nobody wants to have, you know, any issues with somebody being overly aggressive towards them or whatever it is, his he was being accused of i don't know I, yeah i can't say yeah yeah so what are we um this year have you got goal set like uh, what is there a time frame that you want to like what's your goal for 2024 tommy gun well i'm working on a book with a writer uh mm -hmm. jim it's yep. been very it's been very um uh -huh. Oh, sorry, how do I explain? Very intimate because here he is saying, you know, we've had 20 or 30 recorded uh, hour or two hour or even three time, three three hour sessions sometimes where he says, let's just, you know, let's start at the beginning. All right, okay, let's start. And so I, just like this really and he's just recording it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then he'll take it and transcribe it and now we're kind of editing all those particular recordings and to relive, you know, a moment of, my mother, yeah, she passed away, and tragically, very uh, horrifically. And to discover that, and I have to relive those moments over. What do you mean? You discovered her? Yeah, let's just say that. So, so you you don't want to talk about that a bit more? Oh, uh, maybe that'll maybe that part three. Well, I mean, I could talk about it now, but let's just say. Uh, it was. Uh, it's no, something that never leaves you, right? It's with absolutely you for, not you, you know, ever. You, mm. Right. Yeah. You know, mental illness is, is oh, it's unfortunate. Absolutely, and, brother. And again, uh, that's a big thing because it's real. It's very. It's very. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a thing, and it's to have went through that. And to then have to account, live those those that, that account over again, you know, with him, and give detail later. Where I can close my eyes, literally right now, and and visually see what you saw the discovery. Yeah, and then try it, to process it, and then is there any healing from it? Do you think? Yeah, like through you know, time, you, you, yeah, you, you heal yeah. from it, but it's a daily, it's a daily. Mm. It's like this, your brain, whether it's you or me, or I don't know if, for me, you know, I wake up in the morning, you know, and I'm like, that was nice to not be thinking. Yeah. I was out unconscious, so to speak, sleeping. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't have to think. You know, you wake up, poof, you're back to, the, okay, I'm alive. Thank yeah. you for waking me up. God, this is great. But sometimes that fucking thought pops in straight away, right? Yeah. You're like, okay, I'm alive. I still got to make it through today 24 hours and figure out how to do that and try to distract myself from some of the thoughts of yesterday yeah and some of the thoughts of what's going to happen tomorrow because yesterday is gone tomorrow may never come and again the present moment so but then your brain just i think we developed that that your brain goes through this the cycle of, of these thought patterns, and it's called it, you, you want a nor, re, uh, uh, neuralistic, uh, neural linguistic programming or something. I th there's a thing you can reprogram yourself yeah. and your brain in the way it does, and I'd like to look into that. Yeah, possibly maybe but, hip hypnotism or yeah, uh, yeah. Some people can stop smoking from getting hypnotized. Maybe you know it could release a bit of the trauma that you have from that. Sure. So, you know. Some of the most traumatic things I ever de dealt with was my mom passing away, and then I uh, met a girl. She became my wife, and then during my marriage, I had to 
an accident. I was pursuing some amateur bodybuilding, and I at some point wanted to bodybuild. And I was in the great, the best shape of my life at this point. And I went to a uh, Fourth of July party with my wife and one of her family side. And in the backyard was a trampoline. And anyone else? Oh, I trampoline. I remember those when I was a kid. I used to get on them and jump and do some flips. What a cool thing! I'll jump. I'll get on there and jump and do some flips. And there was kids, and you know, some there was kids because there was multiple families. There was the kids. There was pool. They were jumping in the pool. Now this wasn't. I wasn't in the business, but I was built like a brick shit house. You know, muscles, long hair. I looked like uh, the Ultimate Warrior, right? So here's here's this big guy walks into the backyard of this party, Fourth of July party, and the kids go. And grab it to what? Oh my God! Look at this guy. Next thing you know, they're like, he's a wrestler or something. You know, I'm hey hi, and the kids. So I jump on a trampoline and I'm screwing around and I'm jumping up and down and the kids are watching me like, oh my, look at this guy. And then we finish and we go off and get some hot dogs and hamburgers or whatever. And then we, we go back to the trampoline. The kids are like, we want to watch you jump because, you know, you you jump high and you do do, do these tricks. I could do some flips or whatever. So I, jumped, I got on the trampoline and started jumping, and I was trying to go high up in the air. So, oh, my God, big giant trampoline, not the little, you know, big one. So there I was jumping, and however it happened, I momentarily created enough tensile strength on my quadriceps where they, they, they point of insertion, point of origin from kinesiology and, like, physical uh, biology and the way the body works is you've got quadriceps, four muscles that make up your, what allows your leg to go up and down. Then you got your hamstring. What I had done was I, I had these giant legs because I used to squat like 405, 20 times as a five foot eight guy. I had big uh, muscles. So I jump on a trampoline and then all of a sudden, right here at the patellar tendon, no. The muscle snaps off. No. Boom. Did it roll up? They rolled up ah! like a fucking bicep. Excuse my language. If you've ever seen a bicep. Yes, tire, I have. It's horrible. It goes up because it disconnects. Kind of like an extension. Uh, 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 like blinds. Suspension bridge. Imagine a suspension bridge on both ends. It's secure and then it pops off one and everything goes to the other side. My quads came up into a ball. Hey, the, and it did it on both legs. Both legs at the same time. How does that happen? My doctor, who was my surgeon, because they, this happened, so I come to rest on the surface of the trampoline. Couldn't fucking move. My legs had then went behind me because the hamstring was still attached, but the, but the, the quadricep had de separated, so therefore uh, there was nothing forcing the leg to stay in a, in a neutral, straight position. It disconnected and everything went back. I landed, the kids all threw up and, or, you know, go, oh my God, there's crawl crying. Every once I looked at my wife, I knew exactly what happened. Oh, uh, you knew, you knew what I you... knew, I said, oh my God, I just tore my quadriceps off. Ambulance. Ambulance came. In pain, what, what's the pain the level? pain was like taking a softball or a basketball and pulling your, 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 your fucking head over, the, the skin over, the, or, you know, just, just outrageous pain. It was just, it was just... You know, what's the recovery from that? A year. Yeah. I was crippled for nine months in a wheelchair. I went from the best shape of my life to hospital bound, five days in a hospital, nine hour surgery, four hours on one leg, five hours on another. They cut me from the bottom of my knee to the top, opened it up like a mouth, reached up inside, pulled the muscle down, disc reconnected it with two stainless steel screws which are still in there, sewed me back up, wrapped me like a mummy from my waist to my toes, legs straight, and I woke up from the surgery the day later, and my legs, I look like a mummy from here down. With a, obviously with a hole for you. Uh, yeah. So, there I was. I went from 200 pounds to being in the bed the following 145. day. 145. Eventually, I, I managed to I was again wheelchair bound, in a, in with straight legs because you got to reattach the muscles. You can't be bending them yet because they need to 
Yeah, they need to heal. So there I was in a wheelchair. Right, that sounds so fucking painful. I was man. in a. We had. We lived in a. Ho- we lived in a moat. Uh, we lived in an apartment. I had to give up the apartment because we lived on the third floor. Move in with her parents' house. My first wife, and that was the end of that. I wasn't working for a year, and I was in a. I, I was in a wheelchair for about nine months. I literally had to go to physical therapy and learn how to walk again, holding those bars and lifting the leg over the little cones mm. over and over again until, and then I had braces with these big hinges and those crutches. And I used to go up and down the steps with my legs straight and you try to go to the bathroom like this. And eventually it was like the movie Forrest Gump <clears throat> where there I was, today's the day. We're gonna get the braces off your legs. Nine months later, took the braces off and I could walk. And I was walking, but now I was 135 pounds. I lost all that body mass, and and but that was the most today, one of the most horrific injuries. I still have nightmares. Like I'll, I wake up, I'll be on a trampoline, and then it happened, and I wake up, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm still okay. Yeah, I'm okay. So I had to learn how to walk again, and then eventually. I was living in Jersey at the time. My wife and I said, you know what? Screw this. It's cold weather. I'm moving from Jersey to Florida. I went and visit a friend who had already moved from Jersey to Florida, and he danced, and we got back. We drove down, fixed, you know, got everything, drove down, and re, I guess recovered, got back into dancing again because that's what I knew was the quickest way to earn money. I did go to a place and get five bucks an hour as a jet ski rental mechanic. One of the coast, one of the coast intercoastals, while my wife was a worked at Neiman Marcus, and you know I'd have these moments where I'd be working on a jet ski, remembering that I was in the most best shape of my life dancing. Now here I was making five bucks an hour fixing jet skis and renting them out to people. Now don't go too far. Come back at the you know only go to the buoy and come back, and then after that I'm working on jet skis and I'm thinking to myself. How did this even be? How did this even happen? You know, and again, my mother passed away two years before that. Two years after that, I had this terrible accident. And then two years after that, my wife calls me on Valentine's Day from a, from a club because she had been doing uh, Playboy Hawaiian Tropic and all that stuff. And she got into that celebrity world and experienced these uh, fundraising events and stuff and traveled from Florida to the Playboy Mansion quite often. And I think she got it. She got a taste of that world. You know, some of the young ladies that she was working with, these fem- these uh, bikini models may have said, hey, you know, tell us about yourself. Huh? You know, I'm married. Oh, yeah. What's your, well, his name's Tommy. What's he do? Well, he's a, he was a stripper. But he's, you know, I was trying to do something make some clothing line or bikini line or something. And there was a, a dancer, which not much of a huge future ahead of me. So she, I guess, met someone else. Yeah. And saw that she could have that world. And then when, when one of the years, not too long after we got, uh, uh, she, one of her trips, she called, hey, you know, I've been thinking and, I know it's Valentine's Day, but there's no better time to tell you I want a divorce. I said, oh, okay. So I went from, I lost my mom, had the worst, one of the worst accidents, like being crippled for a year. And then shortly after that, two, two years after that, she broke the news I want a divorce. And then she split and moved to California. And I remained in Florida and went on a self-destruct mode of trying every drug that they make. You know what song is playing in my head right now? I'm still standing yeah. better than I ever did. You know that song? Yeah, yeah, I know. Tommy Gunn, you got some amazing stories, and um, I know that this podcast is going to be equally as successful. Which brings me to the the time of obviously we got to, you know, we're gonna we're gonna shoot something else in in an hour mm-hmm, or so. Mm-hmm. But um, I want to I want to I want to do this again. Please, I'd love to. And and I'd love to I'd love you to even to come in and sit on a couple of podcasts as a co-host. Yeah, I'd love great. that. I'd love that. That'd be great. Um, there's a, I mean, there's a lot to tell, but there is. 
with the, the book. Do, with, do, you asked me about 2024. I'm trying to hopefully get a movie going yeah, and then, yeah, you know, the yeah. book and still get up every day and yeah. try to get crawl through the finish line of every day. What's your message for your fans, Tommy? Whew. Wow. Uh, be kind to one another. I mean, the world needs it, and there's not enough of that. And be kind to yourself, really, at the end of the day. We're all difficult on our, on our, we're our, our most worst critics. Uh, treat yourself like somebody you love. And you can do it. There's a lot more people worse off than we are that are doing it. So, uh, man, that's, that's it. I can, I can probably just, That's, 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 a, that's enough. You're a good man, Tommy Gunn. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I love talking you to you. Likewise, I love talking likewise. to you. Guys, another kick-ass fucking pod with Tommy the fucking gun. Uh, mate, man, look, got so many amazing stories, and that's what these podcasts are about. You don't come in with an agenda. You just come and have a chat, and what comes out of it is, is, is emotion, and, and sometimes uh, you get to learn something um, that you didn't know before. And that's the, the beauty of these podcasts is we get to express our feelings and thoughts and, and let people know things about us that maybe they don't. We're going to do this again because I know this is going to continue. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Tommy, thanks for coming up today, brother. Yeah, thanks We're going to go me. interview some power wonderful. slap fighters after this. Sounds good? Yeah, yeah. As, as long as they as long don't get a slap me. on the way in. <laughs> guys. Some of these cats are nuts. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. Let everybody know. You can catch us on Spotify. That's where we're doing it. YouTube as well. And all of your streaming platforms. Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is Marcus Deegan, Tommy Gunn for the Marcus Deegan Show. We're out. Ha <laughs>